Hi everyone, this is Dr. Pruitt. Welcome to this week's uh, 12 lead. We're gonna be talking about septal Q waves today that are pathologic. And so we start with our case. We have a 70 year old male who has a known history of coronary artery disease and he tells you that he's had five heart attacks and five stents before. Um, he had a syncopal episode in the kitchen and you find him lying on the floor because he couldn't get himself up. He did hit his head when he fell. He's denying chest pain right now. Um, the vital signs that you get look like this. He's got a heart rate of 65, a blood pressure of 120s over 80s. He's a little bit hypoxic on room air and his sugar is 85. So appropriately so, this crew quickly got a 12 lead to see if this could potentially have been a cardiac event that led to his fall and his syncopal episode. Here's what it looks like. I'll let you take a, take a look for a second and then we'll go through it together. We do this the same way every time. So we start with our rate. The computer is telling us we've got a rate of 64. I'm gonna find a QRS complex that matches up with a thick red line, and then I'm gonna march that out. So 300, 150, 100, 70, 60. It's between 60 and 70, right at 64. I agree with the computer. Looks like the computer's doing a good job there. Next, we move on to evaluate our rhythm. The two questions we always ask, is there a P wave before every QRS, and is this a regular rhythm? And so first we look for our P waves. I can see one here before this QRS. He's got some lower voltages, but I do see P waves that are pretty regular throughout. Um, and our PR interval is less than 200, so no first degree V block. This is a sinus rhythm. It looks regular, no big gaps, no short intervals. Um, not going to march that out with any calibers. I'll call this a sinus rhythm that's regular. And next we look at our axis. If you remember, we always look at leads one and leads AVF. Lead one is our left thumb. We're looking at the majority of the QRS vector. Is it up? Say so yes, so our left thumb is up. AVF, this is tiny, but I would say it's mostly down. You can see there it's a little bit subtle. So right thumb is down because the majority of the QRS vector is down in AVF. That leaves us with our left thumb up. We've got left axis deviation here. And then our intervals. So the two that we look at at this point are our QRS. We want that to be less than 120. This one's 90, that's good. And then our QTC is right over here. And so it's 463. 450 is technically, greater than 450 is technically long. Greater than 500 is at risk for spontaneous arrhythmia. So this one is longer than it should be. We'll just keep note of that. Consider our medications that we might give this gentleman if we need to. And then we move on to our ST segments. We do this the same way every time as well. So I tend to start and go from left to right. So two, three AVF, we're looking for any ST segment elevations, T wave inversions, anything that would suggest ischemia. I don't see any elevations here or T wave inversions. Next, I move to my high lateral leads, one and AVL. Same thing, nice straight baseline there. Hard to tell about T waves. There's not really strong repolarization there, but um, doesn't look dangerous right now. As we move to our anterior and septal leads, um, no big elevations, but what we do see is these really big Q waves here and kind of a wimpy repolarization there. And then as we move more to the anterior and lateral leads, um, again, T wave inversions here, but no real ST segment elevations or depressions. But we see these Q waves in leads V1, V2, and V3. So what does that mean? Well, what this is telling us is that there's some sort of tissue in the heart that's not able to conduct electricity. And it's hard to tell whether this is an acute infarct or an old infarct. And it doesn't even necessarily to be, need to be an infarct. Sometimes it's a, a tumor or some sort of um, something taking up mass that doesn't conduct electricity. More often than not, it's dead scar tissue from it, either currently occurring MI or an old one. Here's what an old heart attack looks like. This person survived their first heart attack. Um, uh, early heart attack looks dark like that as the muscle starts to die and then over time it turns to really fibrous kind of connective tissue that doesn't conduct electricity. And so you can see what that tells us is as the Q waves develop over time, this is someone who had an anterior MI. This is at 30 minutes, three hours, three days, three months. And you can see these Q waves here 
that we call pathologic, as more and more tissue dies as he's having his heart attack, the bigger and the deeper the Q waves get. And so it can be a very concerning finding. And the thing you, when you see a Q wave, you really want to try to convince yourself, is this a STEMI? Is there something dangerous going on or is this old? Um, and the criteria for what we call a pathologic Q wave to tell you that there's dead or dying tissue is a Q wave that's either greater than one box wide or greater than two small boxes deep. And then any Q wave that's in lead V1 through V3. And then it needs to be there in two contiguous leads. So that's the definition of a pathologic Q wave. You can have Q waves, they can be normal. It's that first downward deflection. The Q wave is the first downward part on the QRS complex. But if they're wide, one box wide or two boxes deep in two contiguous leads, you need to take a really good look and see if there's any other ischemic changes or anything that would suggest that there's a STEMI going on because those are by definition pathologic and they tell you there's some dead tissue in there. And so if we take another look at our initial 12 lead, we've got a patient with a normal sinus rhythm, a rate of 64, a leftward axis, but what we're seeing is a little bit of a QT prolongation, and we see pathologic Q waves. You can see these are greater than one box wide, greater than two boxes deep, and remember, any Q wave that you see in V1 through V3 is not normal. And so this gentleman doesn't look like he's having an acute MI. I can't really see ST elevation here necessarily, and I don't see any reciprocal changes. Um, so I would call this probably an old septal infarct with those pathologic Q waves in those uh, septal leads. And so that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. Uh, please join us next time for our next weekly EKG.